Welcome to the 2023 League Baseball Feminine Quebec Playoffs. It's the U9B division. This is MJ McCumber's team. They're taking on the DDO Expos here at Maddie's Park. Doubleheader for you coming up at 1. U13B girls in action. They finished, of course, 19, 2, and 3. And there's a first pitch swinging to hit back to the pitcher. And the throw forces the first base woman off the bag. And that is Abby Victor with the leadoff base hit. This Girl Hawks team actually played against the U9 mixed team in the beginning of the year in an exhibition. They won that one 20 to 18. Of course, I was the one that was coaching uh, that team. We made it all the way to the championship game of the Lac St. Louis region as Jessica Pearson Salwa stands in, losing a tough 13 12 decision against the NDG Yellow Wildcats last Sunday in Verdun. Outrunner on first base for the Expos. This Gahnawagi team finished 500 during the regular season. They were fourth out of six teams in their section. Jessica Pearson Salwa into that. Down on the count here, 0 and 2. And they call that one a no pitch, so it stays uh, pitch three here. That swung on and missed, so it is tea time. Believe me, if I was clueless about this division last year, I'm far from it this year, having coached 16 games in a, in a playoff. It's not tea time yet. They called that other one, the first pitch of the at-bat, a no pitch as well. So we're only on pitch number two. The slow roller hit back to the first base side. Foul ball. And now pitch number three is coming up. Swung on and miss. And now it is tea time. So each player, each base runner, well, there's only one other base runner, but can only advance to second. Abby Victor on first, and you get two tries off the tee. If you can't break that foul ground, then it is considered a strikeout. And there's strike one. One more try. Hit in the air to the pitcher. And they won't have a play at first. Runners on first and second for the Spos. Biela Kirby, the pitcher. Swung on and missed by Angel Ula. Comes up empty with that pitch. And they he calls it a strike. So that's two pitches in there. There's a shot opposite field. That's where you want to go right now with the lead runner at second. You don't want to hit it straight down the line because if you do and the third baseman makes a play, that's an easy out right there over at third base. You don't have a problem with the batter here. If they have to hit it somewhere, if they hit it to first base, they get the sure out at first, but the two lead runners would advance in that scenario. Anyway, Ua digging in at the dish and sends a shot up the middle and that will get through to the outfield. Bases are loaded. There's a Nuna cross, number seven fields it. And with the bases loaded, the Spos 
are knocking on the door. Now batting number 42, Zoe Parody. Swung on and missed strike one. Don't forget after three strikes, it's not a strikeout at this level, but rather it is a tee, tee up. The advantage is you get to hit it off the tee. The disadvantage would be you can only advance one base off the tee. Sorry about that, I had to adjust my camera. Two strikes, and there's strike three, if that indeed is called, which it looks like it is. So it's tea time. And actually, they didn't call that a strike, so we're gonna retry here. Well, look, it's right in front of you, baby. Right there. Where's the bathroom? Over there. It's closed. Mm -hmm. It's tea time now. And if you're at Kirby, if that ball is hit to you, you're going to try to make a play at home. She's had a couple of uh, pitches hit to her, and that one won't be one of them. They'll get the lead, they'll get the out at second. So that's an RBI fielder's choice or parody. Victor scores. Person Selwa advances a third. Oh, is thrown out going from first to second. And batter number five of six now stands into bat with Allison Taylor digging in. There's a comebacker hit to Kirby. Safe at first and a run scores. And it's 2 nothing. DDO. So the last batter of the inning is Sophia Hung. And you know, the good thing about this though, actually, is that if this at bat gets to the tee, then no run, additional run could score. Or if the Warhawks keep this ball in the infield without the runner being able to turn to third then they would only give up two and that is going to be trouble it gets to the outfield mccumber's on it and now there's going to be a play at home oh i can't believe they didn't send her video goes up by three after the half an inning Back here at Maddie's Park Bottom of inning number one, three nothing lead for DDO, and there's a first pitch swinging by Cashton Albany. She's leading this inning off and trying to get the Warhawks off to a good start here, trailing by three. They're gonna call that one a pitch. That one swung on and missed as well. DDO scoring three in the top of the first. All right. Very interesting decision to send the runner back and not score. I guess they might they might be playing with three run maxes at this level, but our, our level we played with five. So Albany comes up empty on that swing and that means it is tea time. They have the much better looking tees than my team had. I gotta admit, I'm a little envious of that.
Albany sends a shot to the right side of the infield. Throw to first, forces the first baseman off, and she's in there. And the Warhawks have a lead runner aboard here to start the bottom half of inning number one off. Yerduni Rice will now stand into bat, the two hitter. Pretty difficult weekend to have the the regionals with uh, it being, of course, Labor Day weekend and there's a swing and a miss, strike one. There was supposed to be a game at uh, the hospital ball field between the U11Bs and Sir Wa, but one team only had five players and you could do that, you could get away with that in the regular season, but not in the playoffs. My U9s, of course, our first playoff game was played with only six, and there's a shot that gets through to the outfield, and they're gonna send her. Albany on her horse, she's gonna get into third, and that is a double for Rice, and the Girl Hawks are cooking here. As the number three batter now will stand in, Dehanuna Cross standing in. Now the Girl Hawks that are on second and third aren't obliged to run, so if there's gonna be a play at home, Albany doesn't have to run. But I mean, if it's a shot that gets by the pitcher, then yeah, you're running. And that is a shot past the pitcher. So yeah, you're running, and you're running even more. One run scores. Runners on her horse. She's in at second base. They got a tagger, they didn't. That is a two run double for Cross, and the Girl Hawks score two. And now standing into bat is Briella Kirby. That's a high pitch. I don't believe that one will be called. Kirby, the number four hitter, two runs in for Gunnawage. She fouls this one back. There's a shot back to the pitcher. Play to first is in time. Lead runner advances to third and there's one out. Well, the outs don't really matter that much at this level, but they do. Quant quality, the quantity of outs don't really count. Obviously, when you get them though is big. Yeah, that'll stop a score if it's the last batter. Basically at the last batter, there could be zero outs, but it's like a two out situation. Kaslin McCumber stands into bat, the number five batter. Girlhawks within one here, but they got a runner on third. This is batter number five. And that'll go out of play. Yeah, that's my that's something I'm proud to say. I went through an entire bucket of balls this season and didn't lose all of them. So 20 games this year and a bunch of practices. We didn't lose all of the balls. That's probably gonna be a no pitch. They'll re-pitch it here. Gunhawagi trailing three to two. Maisie Cross, the number six hitter, is on deck. And there's a shot by McCumber to second. Throw to first. Tie game. McCumber gets the first. And Gunhawagi has leveled the score. So here's Maisie Cross, who in that exhibition game against my team hit a grand slam. They, they beat us 20 to 18. That was a heck of a game. They, be happy with that, girls. You beat the team that made it to the Lac St. Louis Regional Final in the Mixed League. Where uh, NDG ended up winning by a count of 13, 12, and six full innings. So here's Cross, needing an extra base hit to get the Girl Hawks up by more, by a run. 
And she swings over the top here. Tie game here, 3-3. A tee shot won't change the score, but a shot off the bat could possibly do that. And she comes up empty here. That's a little high. No pitch, they'll give her another chance here. <laughs> three, three here, runner on first base. Last batter of the inning for Gahnawage. Swing a little early and it is tea time. So this game, this inning will end tied up at 3-3. See the importance of the outs there. They don't get that out at first before. Instead of the lead runner being on first, the lead runner's on second. That much closer to scoring. That's why, you know, you at this level you say we got to get the lead out. But honestly, any out is crucial. Got off the edge of the bat to the pitcher. There's gonna be no play and that'll do it for one inning. 3-3 three, three after one full inning here at the Maddie's Park. Top of the second, game tied 3-3 three, three in this uh, first playoff game. Onawagi U9 Girl Hawks taking on DDO Expos. Two strikes here. Uh, they actually they called the three of them in there, so it's tea time now for Natalia Raspin. Both teams three runs in the first inning. There's a high shot that'll get through to right field, and the Expos have the lead runner on. Milwaukee only with seven today, so. Much like my team played. They're only playing with uh, one, one sub, basically. And one batter per inning sits out as well. Here's Kit Mirian, who swings over the top of this one for strike one. Hit well. And that goes foul, but I, I don't think anyone picked it up. I didn't even pick that up until it was late, but. Two strikes here on Marion. Emily Brown, number 16 in the on-deck circle. She's the final batter for the lineup, and then you go back to the top. Fouled back. She lost the bat, but she did get a piece of the ball, so she'll get another pitch here. And that time she comes up empty, and it is tea time once again. Uh, if I'm the Girl Hawks, I don't even have somebody that far deep in center field here. That's just me. I I decide, you know what? Move right to the edge of the grass here, since you're man, it's ob you're obligated to have one in the outfield. Get one in there closer, because if they hit it over you, you can only get one base anyway. 
but I don't want to give away too much of my strategy. Say what you want about it, we made it to the final. That's hit well to second, and that'll get through to the outfield. Runners on first and second. Those are usually the toughest plays when the balls hit right in between first and second base. Like being able to make your own decision is one, th one thing, but having to do so and having something potentially conflict makes that play all the more difficult. Here's Emily Brown. The last hitter in the lineup, and then we go back to the top of the order. She swings under this one. Hit to third. Oh, and they missed the ball. And no one's covering third, and everyone's safe. Tough play. Good heads up base running there by Raspin. In that situation, obviously, the base runner, you gotta avoid, avoid the tag. And when you're the fielder, you gotta scoop it up. You gotta be aware of where the runner is and place the tag at the same time. Tough all around situation. Base is loaded, and Abby Victor, one for one with a single and a run scored into bat here. And that's hit foul. That's hit well, and that will get to second. They will get the out at second base, but a run scores. Brown gets thrown out, 4-3, Expos leading. And here's batter number five, Jessica Pearson Salwa. There's a comebacker hit to the first base, or the pitcher, the throw to first. Oh, he well, she wasn't on the bag. She wasn't on the bag. Runner does get down to first. Runners on first and second. A run scores, it's 5-3, but now you're in a situation if you're the Expos where if you want to get another run, you have to get it hit off the machine. Angel Ua stands in. Swings over the top here, strike one. Swings, men misses. That's two strikes. This is pitch number three here. There's a comebacker to the pitcher. Kirby fields it to throw to first. Missed. But that means the runners have to hold. DDO scores two. It's 5 3 Expos heading into the bottom of the second. Back here at the bottom of the second. Two strikes here on White Bean, the last batter to bat for Gahnawagi. And then we go to the top of the lineup, Cashed in Albany. This is the first hitter of the inning. So six hitters per inning, obviously. They'll go Hun Zakwa, uh, White Bean in there to bat. And she will get the T. Remember last year, in the final game of the, se the playoffs against Gunawagi Purple, she got her second hit off the pitching machine of the season, of the, of the season and then eventually scored what was the game-tying run. Swings over the top here. 
It's just one in the air, and that'll get over the top of the second baseman. And White Bean's aboard. Of course, I, I still remember the sights and sounds of that game. It was just remarkable to see Gonhawagi getting a, a regional championship for a second straight year in baseball that year. As Gonhawagi Purple beat Gonhawagi Pink 17 to 16. Over 200 people in attendance for that game. That was that. I watch that game every once in a while still, and you, you know exactly what where you were. Uh, you know what happened. Here's Cash and Albany one for one, singled back in the bottom of the first, also scored a run. And hits this one well to the right side of the infield foul. <laughs> And Albany sends a shot deep into left field, and that will get to the warning track. <laughs> and White Bean's gonna have to stay in there. Good run. That saves a run. Batter number three stands in here. That is a double for Albany. And here's Yeruni Rice, who doubled back in the first inning and also scored a run. Misses here, strike one. <coughs> she swings over the top here. And she misses that. And they call that a no pitch. I would say probably the right call. There's a slow comebacker. Oh, they're gonna send White Bean back. They gotta send Albany back to second. They're gonna do that. The, the base runners never passed each other. Smart play. So the bases are loaded now. That'll be a single for Rice. And now everyone's going to have to run. The Dirt Hanunta cross stands in one for one with a two run double. We mentioned two RBIs on the day, and a shot to the outfield would be very crucial here for the Girl Hawks. Ooh, that's a little high. And she's not able to hit this one. Fouled, and we're gonna have another pitch in this at bat. Briella Kirby on deck. And we're gonna have another pitch coming up here. U13 Girl Hawks in action later on today at 1 o'clock at the Hospital Ball Field. Game one of their playoffs, they'll be taking on the Laval Tornadoes. The Tornado. 
Kahnawage happen to get drawn into the same division as the only team that's beaten them this season in Lakeshore. There's a shot back to the pitcher. White Bean might be taken out here. She is out at home. Bases remain loaded. Batter number five is up. No runs in for Gonhawage. So this becomes a really crucial at bat for Briella Kirby. We got one. Huh? Nope. I thought she was the second batter that one got out. That was the fourth batter. The leadoff, the two runners we got third and second. That runner had went out first, nobody advanced. And now the home plate at home plate they just got thrown out. This is batter five. Still 5-3, advantage DDO. Kirby in a crucial at bat here. And Kirby hits this one back through the legs of the pitcher. The throw to second gets away. The bases are loaded, one run scores, it's 5-4. And it's all up to Kaslin McCumber now, one for one with a single and an RBI. Kaslin McCumber. Sends a shot to deep left. That's going to be trouble. One run scores. A second run scores. McCumber's on her horse. She was past the line. That means three runs score on the RBI double. Wow. That is huge for Kaislin McCumber. So on our cards, the Warhawks drive in four that inning, and they go up 7-5 after two. Back here at Maddie's Park, top of the third, 7-5 Gahawagi Girl Hawks leading the DDO Expos. Here in game one of the playoffs. And there's a foul ball hit by Zoe Parody, who has reached on a fielder's choice, driven a run in and scored. 0 for 1 on the day. <coughs> so Briella Kirby is out. There's a comebacker to the pitcher. Throw to first will not be in time. Wiping has moved to the mound. So Kirby is out. And she was the pitcher for the first two innings. Parody's on first. Allison Taylor now stands in. Slow roller hit to Whitebean. Throw to first, in time, they get the out. There's no such thing as a bad out. <laughs> Parody does get the second. One batter number three now coming up as first base vacated by that out. Sophia Hong will now stand in. Hit in the air, foul. I'm really shocked that that house hasn't gotten hit at least once this year. I hope it doesn't, and I hope I didn't jinx it. But. Swung on and missed their strike too. Swung on and missed, strike three. going to nobody's house.
Here's the pitch to Hogue. She comes up empty. Bad pitch. You can stay there all you want, but I'm not going to change my answer. So, it doesn't work. Knock down. Don't tell me to do that because I'm not going to stop talking to you. Go see your mom then. Bye. Oh, no. I didn't think so. Go then. Go see your mom now. Oh. Raspin swings here and misses. Raspin has singled and scored a run. Comes up empty on that swing. And there's a swing and a miss and they're gonna call that in the zone. So it's tea time. Well, at least I thought it was. No, they're gonna call that one out of the zone. So that actually means it's a no pitch. Runners on the corners for the Expos. She swings underneath. That's also a no pitch. And that is swung on and missed. That is definitely in the zone and it is tea time. Ditto, what are you doing? Tea time here. There's a shot. Oh, it's dropped. Run scores for the Expos. Oh, that was a hot shot hit right at second base. <coughs> Runners on first and second now for the Expos. Albany nearly grabbed it. And if she did that, I mean, you're looking at a double play possibility. And that's hit in the air, foul. Chases the on-deck batter off stride. That was Emily Brown, who's standing in that on-deck circle. Well, who gave you donuts? Who gave you donuts? I, I want donuts. How come I don't get donuts? There's a shot hit! Albany knocked it down! Oh, the runner on second has to go back, but the Expos have tied the game. But that could have been a heck of a lot worse if she didn't knock it down. So here's Emily Brown. Runners on first and second. DDO has tied the game at seven, and we're going to have a timeout here. The bases are loaded now. That run that might have just, we thought just scored actually was called back and from watching the replay it looks like clearly Albany had possession of the ball before the runner got the third. So now it becomes basically a two out situation. This is batter number six, Emily Brown batting. And the Expos trail by one, seven, six. They've scored one here. Expos trailing by one. 
There's a slow roller hit. And the Expos have tied this game anyway. They score two. And it is 7-7 seven, seven after two and a half. The comebacker hit right back to the pitcher. Girlhawks have a runner on first here. Maisie Cross hit the shot right back at the pitcher. Good stop. And now in his white man. Whoa! Have someone showing me snails off camera. Here's White Bean into bat. This game is tied right now at sevens. Runner on first now. Riella Kirby is out for the rest of this game. So the Girl Hawks are down to only six. And it is tea time. Runner on first for the Girl Hawks. Game tied 7 7. This is the bottom of the third inning. Too bad my car's not here. I got like a crap load of baseballs in there. Good, I'm just giving it to you. Well, actually, my manager, Terry, would probably get pissed, but it's all right. It's all right. Season's over. And well, there's a comebacker up the middle, and that gets through. Runners on first and second. That's a crucial base hit. Back to the top of the lineup we go with Albany. Two for two with a double and a single. She has scored twice. And Albany swings over the top here, strike one. Foul tipped, strike two. And there's a shot hit foul. As I swear I felt the drop. It's all right. I'm safe. The fish on my shirt needs water to breathe. There's a shot. It hits the pitcher in the foot. They could, they could have sent Cross home, but there's nobody at third to coach. Oh, I feel bad now because... Brian Alfred, the third base coach, actually said, anyone that wants to coach third base, go ahead. And, oh! And that third base coach would have been really useful right there. I'm sorry, my kid just ran right into my leg and I wasn't expecting that. Base is loaded. And Yeruni Rice, two for two in the game, will step in. Dad, I'm super sorry. It's all right. It's all right, I'm alive, kind of. Don't worry. Me. It's all right. It's all right. Swung on a missed strike one. Thank you, baby girl. It's okay, baby. You don't have to do that. Okay, baby. It's all right. Oh. 
There's a shot into the outfield. This could be trouble. One run scores. White Beans given the, the wave, she will score. And she will have to hold that third, but three runs come across. Yaruni Rice gets the third. It's 10 7. And there, Hanutna Christ, uh, Cross will now stand in. And don't forget, with Kirby now out, McCumber's going to be the last batter in this inning as well. There's a shot to serve. That Karam's off the shortstop and into the outfield. And she's going to be on her horse to third to throw. She has to, she has to stay at third base. But that is an RBI triple for Cross. Took a crazy Karam into the outfield. 11-7. And the maximum fifth run of the inning is at third base. All McCumber needs is a single. Last batter of the inning for the Girl Hawks. What, a, what an inning for Gahnawagi. Two bi straight big hits. Back to back triples. And that is a formula for success if you're the Girl Hawks. There's Gahnawagi finished 500 in the regular season. There's a shot. Slow roller and it drifts fair. It stays fair. Gone Hawaii. Max is out here in the third. It's 12 7. Girl Hawks after three. Back at Maddie's top of the fourth. Expos get a leadoff runner aboard as Victor gets a single. So here's Jessica Pearson Salwa, two for two on the day. The Girl Hawks have opened up a five run lead here. It's 12 7. It's both teams' first games of the playoffs. There's a slow roller hit the first, picked up and take it to the bag. Cross makes the play, out number one. Victor gets the second. And don't forget, gone the wall game playing with only six for the rest of the way. Batter number three now into bat, and that'll be Angel. Angel Ola. Swung on and missed strike one. Swung on and missed. Coming up at one o'clock at the hospital ball field, game two of our double header, the Laval Tornade and Gunnawaga U13B Girl Hawks. Girl Hawks finished first place in the regular season, 19, three and two, or 19, two and three. And uh, their playoff drive will start today. And another foul tip. They're going to keep it going here. <laughs> Swung on and missed.
So it is tea time for Oa. There's a shot into the outfield. Runners on first and third now for the Expos. So batter number four stands in now. Zoe Parody, one for two, has reached on a finger, fielder's choice, has singled and scored two runs. Amelia, don't shoot sand. There's a hit to first, scooped up by Cross. She will get the out at set first. The throw to second won't be in time, but that does score a run. And Allison Taylor will now stand in. That makes it 12-8. There's a high hit over the head of the pitcher. She never. Oh. Runners on the corners. So here's Sophia Hong, two for two on the day with an RBI and a, a single. It's hit in the air. Yes! She caught it. Good catch made by Yahuni Rice. 12 8 after three and a half. Back at the bottom of the fourth, Gonhawagi Girl Hawks U9 B team leading 12 8. Here in game one of the playoffs. Game, of course, brought to you by Mohawk Super Mingo. White Bean leading things off, swings over the top here. Swung on and missed. Bathroom is over there. Even when you bring me the toilet. Okay. There's a shot in the air. Let's go, run, run, run. Throw to first. 
Got her! One out. I would stay there. Yeah. And meanwhile, away from the play, or my play, sorry, I was trying to figure out how to get my daughter to go to the washroom. Albany beats out the throw for her fourth hit of the day. So the Warhawks have a runner on first. And here is Yeruni Rice has a single, a double, and a triple, and there's a shot up to the left side of the infield. Throw to second, they get the out at second. So Rice reaches on the fielder's choice, Albany thrown out. Their Hanunna cross will now stand in. Runner on first. Batter number four here for the Girl Hawks. No runs in. And look out, that is trouble. That'll find the gap in left field. Oh, now they're having her go back to first. They tag her out at first. Runner gets the third. Yerduni Rice made it all the way to third. And Kaislin McCumber comes in. She's batter number five here. So luckily for the Girl Hawks, they don't actually play with three outs at this level. McCumber swings under here, strike one. Runner on third. Foul. That's a little high. Swung on and missed, it's tea time now. Yeah. Oh, and you know what, they call that a no pitch. So instead, McCumber still has a chance off the machine here. McCumber hits this one. And now, there's no runs in. Runners are on first and third, and it's up to Maisie Cross now. This would be a really big hold for the Expos if they don't allow a single run to score. Maisie Cross tonight, two for two. Two singles and a run scored. They're hoping to see Maisie hit off the tee here, off the machine here. One run has yet to score. So this is the last batter, it's still 12-8. That's how we started the bottom half of this inning. This could be a crucial hold for DDO. And there's a shot up to the outfield and this could be trouble. Gets to the warning track. Cross on her horse. 
A cross is being waved. It is a three run homer for Maisie Cross. And could that be the backbreaker? 15 8, Girl Hawks. Yeah. Top half of the fifth inning. Gonawagi Girl Hawks leading 15 to 8. And uh, the umpire is over at the Girl Hawks bench. And the ump Alex has just gone over to, to the scorekeeper and is asking her, I guess, for confirmation of the score. 15 8 right now, Girl Hawks leading. The top of the fifth. And I believe that this may be considered the last inning. Oh, the oh, first pitch was at 10 08. And the coaches are going to discuss things. And I'm not sure what they're talking about. Here we go. Talia Raspin will start this uh, inning off. Foul ball. Gonawagi 15, DDO 8. Okay. I think they were trying to get confirmation as to whether or not they will call this the last inning. Out. Fouled. That one did not make it to the line. Swung under. And now it is tea time for Raspin. That was swung on a miss. They called it a no pitch. But this one will be called a pitch. And we will have a tee time opportunity for Raspin here. So that'll go up the middle and that'll be a base hit. And Kit Marion will now stand in. Marion comes up empty here, strike one. Swung on and missed strike two. Swung on and missed here. And they call that one a no pitch.
and now it's tea time. That's hit on the right side, and that'll get through to the outfield. Runners on first and second. Swung on a miss, strike one. Emily Brown is two for two with two singles. Swinging under this one though. Runners on first and second for the Expos trailing here 15 to eight. They're gonna need a couple of big innings here to close this game off. Actually got off to a very good start in that bottom of the fourth there. Warhawks only had a runner on first going into batter number five with no run scored. You know, they had a runner on third. But then after a runner reached first, uh, Maisie Cross hit that three run home run. That has really put this game out of shouting distance. Here's the wind up and the pitch. Brown hits this one. And she is safe. She beats it out. Yep, I agree with the ump. She's safe. Bases are loaded. Back to the top of the lineup with Abby Victor. Two for three with a fielder's choice, a single, and two runs scored. Crucial at bat here for the Expos. There's a hard hit to first. They will get the out at first. That'll score a run, 15-9. Runners advance to second and third. Jessica Pearson Salwa will now stand in. She's batter number five this inning. And now there's no force at home. So Miriam or Brown don't actually have to run here. They're not obligated to run. If there's a ball hit right back to the pitcher, they might not send her. They're gonna send her here because that'll get by. And runner, a runner scores, it's now 15-10. Marion scores, Brown gets the third. And batter number six now stands in for the Expos. 15-10, gone Hawaii leading. Last batter. Expos have scored two in this inning, but they still trail by five as Angel Oa stands in. Oe Angel. Foul.
That's hit well to shore that gets through. And that may be trouble. The throw to third. They're gonna send her around. No, they, yeah, now they're gonna send her. And there's gonna be no play at home. A three run home run and they max out. The Expos put up five. And now it's 15-13 Warhawks. And that is the final actually, that's it. That's it because that they said this was the last inning. So a good way for the Expos to end it. The Warhawks take it by a count of 15-13. And Ganhawagi is 1-0 in the playoffs. The U13B Warhawks are coming up in about an hour and a half's time, and we'll have that for you at the hospital ball field. Warhawks 1-0, Expos 0-1. I'm Brandon Bortle for Baby Boo Memories. We'll see you soon. Anagiwahe.